You asked, why are EVs more expensive than petrol cars? Is there a reason EVs cost more than petrol cars? Well, first of all, really comparing EVs to petrol cars is like comparing apples and oranges. Petrol or diesel engine vehicles are quite different to battery only electric vehicles, which makes them really hard to compare in a price to price comparison. And this is actually for a number of reasons. Yes, there are petrol and EV vehicles from the same manufacturer, that are similar in size and fit out, like the Hyundai Kona, for example, which comes in a petrol version and an electric version. Although what we tend to forget is that while the name and manufacturer are the same, that's where the comparison should stop. For example, the number of cars built for both versions will still see the petrol version trump the EV version right now. Because the higher the production numbers, the lower the price is able to be. Now, this might change in years to come, but because of the manufacturing volume and the higher component of research funds are recovered on the EV version, right now the EV version has to cost more. So this leads us to ask, why are EVs expensive? You regularly hear people say that the cost of an electric vehicle, even a base model, is $75,000 to $80,000. And while this might be true for the US and American models, this is especially true if it is currently a popular vehicle. As with everything post-COVID, it's all about supply and demand, and EVs are becoming popular and fashionable. But there are other EV vehicles mainly built in Asia, including China, which come in at a surprisingly low entry price. <laughs> what? At this present time, the BYD Auto 3 standard range, which is a small to medium SUV, is available through online orders for as low as $47,000. This vehicle has a battery range of 345 kilometers, and the model with an extended range of up to 420 kilometers costs a flat $50,000. In a recent announcement, the MG ZS EV has launched their 2023 model, which looks stylish and offers Australia's lowest priced small to medium SUV with a driving range between charges of 320 kilometers at a price of $44,990. Some observers might say, but I can get the standard MG petrol version at $21,990 and the MG is now a Chinese brand, so no wonder they're cheaper. But the build quality is steadily catching up and some might remember the Kias and Hyundais from 20 years ago. You get what you pay for. What most folks who consider an EV unaffordable don't necessarily consider is that the service costs are on average 40% lower, saving thousands of dollars over a decade. There are no oil filters, oil changes, spark plugs, timing belts, starter motors, and the list really just goes on. Also, most EVs have regenerative braking, where the braking energy does not go into heat, but is actually used to recharge back into the battery. Another common question is, when it comes to EV costs, why not go hybrid? Maybe they are cheaper and still save a lot of petrol. Yes, they might sound cheaper, but you will find a lot of plug-in hybrid vehicles are actually more expensive than pure EVs, because in a hybrid vehicle, there are two engines, the petrol engine and an electric one. So cost-wise, there's not that much savings there, and you still need the standard maintenance anyway. The most important factor in the overall vehicle cost is the long-term fuel and environmental costs. Electric vehicles clearly win out on that one, because you are paying $1.50 to $2 for a litre of unleaded petrol. And if we go electric, $4 will cover us travelling 100 kilometres. So if there are all these benefits, why are there not more EV options available to bring prices down? The production capability of major car manufacturers is still somewhat limited when it comes to EVs. And in many European countries especially, there are just heaps of incentives in place to sell them. Australia lags behind in the legislative framework, and that's why many manufacturers don't actually send us their latest models and don't make their whole EV range available. BYD Automotives is aiming to bring in an affordable mini hatch called the Dolphin or BYD Addo 2. Rumours have it that the price point will sit around $35,000 to $40,000. So people might want to wait for price parity, and this might mean waiting till 2027 or 2028 as by then production numbers will have ramped up and battery costs hopefully come down to make this goal achievable. Currently, the going cost of one kilowatt of a lithium battery is as high as $1,000, with battery capacity for EVs starting at 35 kilowatt hours and reaching up to 70 kilowatt hours plus. So you can clearly see where the money in an EV goes, to the battery pack. By the time we have more supply and manufacturing capacity for lithium technology, Predictions are that this will halve the price and we will see many more affordable electric vehicles. If you just can't wait and want to get into the market now, please view the link in the description for your state or territory's EV support mechanisms, because some parts of Australia are starting to give incentives to purchase electric vehicles. Some states have lower registration or stamp duty rates, as well as cash incentives, while the federal government has foreshadowed the scrapping of the luxury vehicles tax on electric vehicles over a certain price point. 
If you have any further questions, please feel free to comment below and we will reply soon. Want more Energy Answered? Visit yourenergyanswers.com for quality energy products, tools and calculators, and find your quality local installers. Please support the channel by liking the video, hit that subscribe button, and ring the bell, and check out all our other videos. You're still here? I'll see you next time. Bye.